Joining me on the DeMaio Report is Mark Mix, president of National Right to Work Foundation. They stand up for the rights of workers against these greedy union bosses. So, Mark, um, I noticed that the petition has been sent by a teacher at Gompers to the California Public Employee Relations Board, PERB. Now, I've had experience with them. PERB is a <laughs> union-dominated star chamber state agency why in the world should we even trust perb to be an honest broker here well carl first of all thank you for paying attention to this important case <clears throat> and these are the teachers at the school trying to find a way out uh, from underneath the monopoly control of the san diego education association teachers union and this is a this is the probably the most perfect case study of labor policy that one can imagine, particularly when it relates to the educational system, because, you know, this school, when it was a government school, was failing miserably. It was a terrible environment, and it got converted to a charter, and when it got converted to a charter, it started becoming a, a very desirable place for certain constituencies and demographics to go to. And once it got itself fixed and got itself, you know, doing good work, the union steps in, and to your point, they unionized the workers by card check, meaning there was no secret ballot election. There was this coercive mechanism for getting people to sign a card that says, okay, the union is now representing you. And, of course, we we walked with these teachers, uh, what was it, almost two years ago now, uh, more than two years ago, when they tried the first time to decertify the union. That means to throw the union out. But, Carl, your point about the, per- the Personnel Professional Employee Relations Board is spot on. There literally is a rule. It's called Regulation 32752 that says that any unfair labor practice charge that the union files, no matter what it is, will block a vote for decertification, that the the union is automatically presumed to be true and accurate and honest about their charge, and it stopped the workers for almost two years last time from having a vote to decertify the union. We hope this time they can get through the process and get it done right because the majority of the employees have now signed the petition saying, we want out. So we'll see what happens from this point forward. If uh, PERB decides that they're going to uh, basically try to rescue the union one more time because they have a habit of doing this, they, they overturned our pension reform initiative by lying to judges that it was a government initiative when in fact it wasn't. It was a citizen's initiative. Um, what are the opportunities for you to then make this a, 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 a landmark case? Are you, know, are you looking to file litigation if necessary? Well, we're helping the teachers now walk through this process as we did the last time, and we are prepared to do that. In fact, we appealed um, a ruling by the perp, and, and Carl, you won't be surprised by this, but your, your listeners might be, that the union filed the unfair labor practice charge that stopped the entire process, and then when we argued that they should release it, there was never a hearing on the merits of the ULP. They just continued to let it go. It went on for 21 months, and the union finally got the, uh, the, the, they, they finally agreed to a settlement of the ULP, knowing that they had a mail ballot set up, which is another coercive tactic that unions use, as opposed to the secret ballot, um, when the decertification vote happened. And they negotiated a contract that basically said, okay, if you keep the union here, you get this contract. And while that may have benefited the teachers th- then, right now, basically the union's control over the school district of this particular charter school is something that the teachers object to. And I suspect, to your point, Carl, that the union will probably file another unfair labor practice charge, and the existing rules of the PERB will assume that they are honestly uh, stating this unfair labor practice charge, and they may try to block it, but we'll be prepared to help them provide representation once again to get them through this process. I mean, are you seeing this happening, I'm, I'm assuming, across the state? Because this is basically the, the, the dirty trick book. If they, they, they know that if these teachers actually got a fair election, that they would discontinue giving the union money. And these government bureaucrats at the PERB board continue to basically allow this scam to go on. I mean, uh, how, how do we absolutely like, reset the clock, you know, level the playing field here? Well, I'll give you an example of some of the work that the, that the Right to Work Foundation did on behalf of private sector employees. We had a case on behalf of workers at a brake factory called St. Gobain's 
up in the Northeast. And basically, the unions use the same playbook. They immediately upon the employees, they get wind of the employees saying, hey, you know what, we'd probably be better off without the union here. What they do is file unfair labor practice charges. This is right out of the textbook. There's nothing special about it. It's operating standard operating procedure. Well, we got the NLRB to rule that there had to be a, a basic a, a hearing on the causal nexus of the ULP as it relates to the employee's wishes. And if the union can't prove that it has anything to do with the employee's desire to decertify the union, then the election will go ahead in the private sector. Obviously, California's laws don't match the, well, and I won't even call them common sense laws of the federal government as it relates to private sector workers, but California's got this, this presumption in the statutory regulations that say the union is right no matter what. And in the last time we had this case, just to repeat it because it's so outrageous, there was never a hearing, never even an investigation into whether or not the unions, what the union was saying was accurate or true. They just let it go. You're presumed to be right, so we're going to delay the election until you tell us that you no longer have this unfair labor practice charge. You, the so union, me, tell so, us so, so, so you don't have your, your creative legal uh, mind. I've always respected your strategic thinking on stuff. What if – you all approached it from a different standpoint. Obviously, you know, continue to play the game of PERB, but what if you filed a class action lawsuit saying that the state of California is illegally and unlawfully allowing the union uh, through this scam, uh, you know, pretending wink, wink, nod, nod, that there's a, a true complaint that needs to be investigated, uh, to take people's money out of their paychecks um, and uh, waste it, that these that these employees deserve their election, and since they were not given an election, that that that, that they are the victims of fraud, uh, or or maybe even better, isn't an election a form of speech? Isn't this a First Amendment right that they're basically basically being told, no, you're not allowed to speak out against the union, not allowed to express your desire to leave because of some convoluted scam that the state has perpetrated, and, or even equal protection. Equal protection. I mean, I think we just we have to figure out how to up this a level because unless we get this into either a state court or more likely into a federal court, I think PERB is going to continue to play the game. Well, they absolutely will, Carl. And, and I think one of the things we run up against with, I mean, we are we will be creative as creative as we possibly can on this. And you're, I, I'm intrigued by your ideas and just your thought process. So I, I'm making some notes right now. Hey, hey, I'll talk this, to your lawyers about it because look, I've I've dealt with these bullies and thugs before, and the only language they 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 understand is when a judge finally says, not only am I ruling in favor of the plaintiffs, but I'm actually forcing you to pay for their legal fees, and now we're going to have an opinion that others will be able to use as well. I'm up against a break. Yeah. I am thrilled that you're, you're helping the folks, uh, the, 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 the uh, teachers at Gompers, and, and by extension of that, you're helping these kids out as well because they deserve a quality education. Mark Mix with National Right to Work Foundation. Check them out. They're doing great work. Contribute if you can.